Going to start this video off with the full stair walk. Look at all the art and the classic Brixie sign. Hey, look, there's me and the wife. Pretty cool, hey? Mini fig painting. I like the 3D ones, I like the shield and Spider Man on the end. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's Jordan here. So, I've been working hard on the ski slope in the Winter Village, and that project is coming along nicely. And today, I want to change it up. I want to do something a little bit different, and that is working on my backlog and also building a bunch of sets and hopefully placing them on the shelves. I've uh, pulled out my entire building backlog. At least I think it's my entire building backlog. There's probably more somewhere, but I, I never really realized how big it was. I was actually doing some pab sorting, like pab cup sorting, and then I was like, ah, well, you know what? Maybe I should work on cleaning up a different mess today, and that not, not really a mess, but sort of a mess, I guess, but uh, try and build some of my sets and, and clean, them, clean them up out of the uh, back room there. Pretty cool, though. There is uh, a ton to choose from, for sure. Still got to decide whether or not I'm going to use this in the Winter Village. I think I am. I like the snow-covered tree. I like the skating rink. I like this fun, like, ice slide. Also, I can put this somewhere in the uh, city. Same with the nice Lunar New Year lights, right? So I think there's lots of good pieces that can be used everywhere. The wife has yet to build this. She's definitely going to get that done today. Steamboat Willie. I'm obviously not going to be able to get all of these things done because there are a lot of them. We also have like this friend's fireplace, the light bricks. This here I've been meaning to turn into a modular building and put that in the city. Definitely got to do that. Then we have the mobile crane. I bought that way back when it came out. I don't know what my plan is for that because I don't really have any construction sites in the city. So that's sort of why I never really built it because ever since uh, getting it, I've never really had anywhere to put it. Uh, we got the Houses of the World 4 promo. This one here, which probably needs to wait for an underwater scene of some sort, I would imagine. But when I get that underwater scene built, I will definitely be integrating that. I still haven't built my moving truck. Oh my gosh. What's wrong with me? Then there's also the home of the brick. This is the Lego house, a minifigure tribute. That's pretty cool. Like we've got to get that built. For sure doing that today, no matter what. I'm sorry, I've been losing my voice all morning for some reason. Uh, then we have Disney duos. I think the wife is going to build that in conjunction with Steamboat Willie. Those will pair up nicely. I have the gaming tournament truck once again i've been meaning to build that just don't know where i'm going to put it because it is a large semi i guess it can be driving around anywhere in the city but like it might take up a bit too much space still it's only 344 pieces it could whip that off pretty quickly i've had this forever too i should build that and place it in the forest right we got the patronus charm couple dementors sirius and also harry potter and then the uh Hulkbuster, the Battle of Wakanda. That looks like a clean Hulkbuster. I never did end up getting the big one, but maybe this is perfect for the uh, Marvel shelf. I'd like to get that built as well. Maybe even the Batman bicycle, right? The bat the Batman bicycle. Oh my gosh, the Batman bat cycle. Come on, there we go. Nice little Technic set, right? 641 pieces. Now this train. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I've got so many trains that are not operational right now. Like there's underneath the Lego city and my tracks are full. So I would love to build that and put it in the city, but that means I'd have to cycle out some of my favorite trains. One of them being the passenger train, the yellow and blue one, and then also the high speed passenger train, which is the white, black and red one. I also have an ATTE. I have yet to build a single ATTE, isn't that insane? And then I also have the Ministry of Magic down here. So yeah, the backlog is pretty big right now. I think it's time to tidy this up a bit, build some sets and display them here in the Lego room. So of course I had to start with Redbeard, the upscaled minifigure, exclusive to the Lego house, boxes autographed by the designer. How cool is that? I've always said they should make more of these, and then guess what? They make another one and they make it exclusive to the Lego house. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You with the printed face, but not the printed hat. 
Comes with a really cool hat though that is built using hinge plates, slopes, and also some cheese slopes. His decorative coat is awesome. I love like the shoulder pads. Also just like the pieces right there to create the belt, some gold elements, a hook for a hand, and then he's got a map in his other hand, which is built on bricks. And that is a sticker element. It's really neat how it can fit right into his hand. His hand can articulate, his shoulders can articulate as well, and he can also articulate at the hips. Speaking of hips, check out his peg leg and also the stand that he sits on, which comes with two printed one by eight tiles. He can be removed from that stand just like so because he's only held in place by two of the two by two modified circular tiles with the jumper, I guess I'll call it. Also, he's got some hidden secrets inside his head. Check this out. In the instruction manual, there's a big write-up about the history of minifigures and also Redbeard and a write-up about the Lego house as well. You can meet the designer and learn about the printed map piece. And then as we flip through here, we're gonna see some different things and included in that is the Easter egg within his head. Check it out, it is super cool. It is right here. All right, so we start building his head, right? Pirates think about a couple different things, right? The water and islands. So there you go, you got a little miniature island in his head and it's right underneath those arch pieces. And then what else do pirates think about? Treasure and gold, and look, there's some gold one by one circular studs in there to represent treasure and gold. How neat is that? A little Easter egg deep inside this guy's head. Next, I decided to build the moving truck, which is actually a GWP that was issued in conjunction with the Jazz Club. This thing is super cool. There's a lot more to it than what meets the eye. First off, it comes with two minifigures, right? Not too bad. Also a highly detailed truck. I like the little radiator up front there that was built using two by two dish elements and it just looks clean. It's got like this cubed back end, right? Guess what? Inside it's loaded full of furniture that can actually be cycled throughout your modular buildings. And it's actually packed strategically so it's like Tetris in there. You can access it by opening up the back doors or you can also pop off the roof of the truck. And when you open up the back doors, it actually reveals a nice little detail. There is a loading ramp that fits right in that little slot above the back license plate. So that is really cool. And the ramp can be set up like that because that one by two plate with the rail actually has a little groove, which sort of locks it in place. And then when you put it back in, you flip it around like that so you can use that same groove to pull it out. And check out how much cargo was actually jammed in the back of that truck. There's a nice looking piano there, a jukebox, also a desk, a piece of art, this box right here that says to jazz club, also this two wheeler, and the minifigures come with alternate faces which are sort of like distressed faces, maybe like, oh, this is heavy, or oh my gosh, how is he gonna carry that? So that is a cool GWP. It's actually pretty easy to pack away everything in the truck, so everything gets Tetris in there, and then the painting goes on top like that, and then you can put the roof back on. And the interesting thing is, is it's packed in such a way that it's actually not a whole lot of room for movement in there. All right, I've got to say it. I think this is the best Hulkbuster that I have ever built. Granted, I haven't built all of the Hulkbusters, but I've built like quite a few, I feel. And I think this is the most detailed one like at this scale. And I actually really like the size of it and the scale of it. There's some great sticker detailing. That's all stickers there. But I just love the detailing on the arms with all the different elements. Also on the hands and wrists and also the knees. Like the legs in general just look really good. Some great part usage in there. Also you can open up the head and you can fit Bruce Banner inside. This print piece has been reused 
several times, I think, but it does look good the way it just like fits between like the, the neck pieces there. Yeah, this thing is killer. One thing I will say though, like for the time that I've played around with it here, that there's not very many ways that you can actually position it in a standing position. You know what I mean? Like if I start articulating the legs, like they can flex outward and they can also bend at the hips. But if I start doing that, it's gonna like fall over. So there's not very many ways that you can display it standing like this. This is pretty much the only way, but you can also move the elbows and also the arms and then the uh, hands as well. So there's quite a few different points of articulation. But yeah, this Hulkbuster is super clean. I definitely like the look of it. And you get a really cool minifigure in here as well. It's uh, Bruce Banner. When he's like refusing to turn into the Hulk, right? That's why he has to uh, man the Hulkbuster. And then you also get uh, two Outriders and also a Koi. Yeah, pretty cool set. Glad I was able to uh, build this one here today. And eventually we're going to add it to the marble shelf. Oh yeah, and then Bruce has to sit inside and this dome will go over him like that. So you can barely see him in there. You just see his hands. So yeah, it encloses a minifigure pretty good as well. It's the gaming tournament truck. 344 pieces and some very stylish minifigures. Love it. I also like the size of this semi. Like, look how small it is. It's tiny. The wheels are almost laughable how small they are, but I think it looks pretty neat. I like the logo, too. Those are sticker elements, and you can see it there, and you also see it on the front of the trailer. You've got, like, the gaming controller on the top, which can articulate. Pretty stylish, futuristic-looking trailer. Once again, the tires are laughable. Look how small those things are. But these huge panels here can actually open up. So this one here opens up and it reveals the massive TV screens where you have the two gamers going at it and the two gamers are right here. The lady in pink and the guy in blue. And this guy right here who's got like an amazing face, I believe is like the host, right? Because he's got that same logo on his torso. And then this lady is somebody who's just like a spectator. I like this minifig's face too. That's funny. He's like, oh no, I just lost or something. And then this one, he's all serious. Like, oh yeah, I'm a superstar. She sort of got the same deal there. Like, oh no, I'm losing. Or, oh yeah, I'm so good. So of course the gamers can be put in the truck and you can see they've got their computer screens right there. The two by two black tiles with the stickers on them. They also have the uh, keyboard print pieces and their positions can actually be swiveled outward. And when you swivel them outward, you can see a screen on the back wall. The backdrop for that screen there is all print pieces. Like those panels, those like purple and pink panels are all print. However, the characters that you see battling right there are sticker elements, but we can move them back and forth and create like a battle scene. Ah, them like attacking each other, right? Like they would be in the game or on these big screens. So that's a pretty cool uh, feature there. I like that. There's also another piece of the truck right back here that opens up. And there's the sword, which represents blue, and then like the oversized hands there, which represent pink. And I believe this is merch that they're actually selling out the back of the truck because there is a uh, printed slope element right there. That looks like a cash register. This side opens up as well so that you can see the working features of it, right? And uh, these panels here are pretty crazy. Like that's one big solid piece with those lime green tiles on it. And then there's one more piece that opens up on the front of the truck here. And this is this like trans green, almost looks like a vintage spaceship cover, you know? And when you open that up, there's a little trophy inside, I believe for the winner. And it has a decorative gaming controller on the trophy. So it's a pretty cool set. I just don't know where this is gonna go in the Lego city. It could go like in the amusement park or anywhere in the city, I guess they can set up like a gaming tournament anywhere on the streets or something like that, or it could just be driving around and these characters could be put somewhere else. But look how small this truck is. It's actually a pretty neat build. It looks futuristic. I definitely like it and it's cute, I would say. I just think the size of it is, is funny.
As I was building all that stuff, Jose finally got a chance to build the Disney set. So she built the mini Steamboat Wheelie, which is a GWP, and also the Disney Duos. I was skeptical of getting this set, but now that I see it built, I'm pretty happy with it. I was surprised by the amount of unique print pieces found in this set, specifically the 2x4 tiles, which are displayed with each character. So we have the characters from Moana, and then the uh, ones here from Finding Nemo, Beauty and the Beast, and Pocahontas. Very cool. So I believe his eyes are print, his nose and mouth is not. But Cogsworth face is printed. Also, his face is printed. I'm sorry, I'm the worst with pronouncing names. And I know his name, but I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. I'm so sorry. Uh, but yeah, I love the pieces here as well. Uh, for like the dripping wax on his head and arms. Very neat. Or hands, I should say. Uh, yeah, and then we've got some more printed pieces right back here. Like this one right here was found on the orchid, but that's uh, Squirt's shell. Yeah, that's a nice one there. And then you've got Nemo. Some sticker elements for the curved slopes of uh, Squirt's face, but he has printed eyes. And then we have the Moana duo as well. I can't remember their names. I am the worst at remembering names. What's wrong with me? I also uh, was telling Jose that, oh man, we need to watch uh, all of these movies again. I've seen probably Finding Nemo the most out of all these movies, then probably Beauty and the Beast, and then Moana. Moana is awesome. I love that movie. I specifically love The Crab. Can't remember his name, but The Crab was amazing. <laughs> I think he was so funny. I loved his song. Uh, and also Dwayne is pretty sweet in that movie as well. Pocahontas I have not seen as an adult. So it's good that we built these, or she built these, because I was like, okay, add to wanted list on Disney+. Plus. We need to watch all of these before we go to Disneyland, because we're going to Disneyland uh, within the next uh, few months, which is uh, very exciting stuff, right? So there we go. We got the Disney duos. I think they're great little displays. I'm curious to see how we're going to display those in the Lego room. Not too bad. Actually, better than what I originally expected. There we go, Disney Duos. And then we also got the uh, little Steamboat Willie GWP that has this moving feature. You can see the paddle wheels spin and the smokestacks go up and down. And then we've got our Steamboat, or our Mickey minifigure, sorry, not Steamboat Willie. And uh, I will say that this here is just a little bit blocky, like it's quite square, right? But you do have the loading crane on the back there. And then you can see some of the Technic pieces and wheels on the bottom of it, which connect to some Technic axles and drive that paddle wheel and get this thing moving. Pretty neat, just for fun. Here is the GWP and here is the original idea set. So you can see how much smoother this one moves. And you can also see the size difference and also the detail difference. There's just a lot more detail here and also some really nice print pieces which this one did not come with like there's no print pieces at all uh, it would have been nice maybe to get a print piece in this very scarce i'm going to say will be very scarce gwp but yeah this thing is an epic set i like the uh, original steamboat willy and i'm pretty happy that they issued something that is uh pretty cool for, as a gwp as well Definitely killing it with the Disney GWPs for the 100th anniversary. Oh yeah, check out the minifigures that came with the original Steamboat Willie set. You've got Mickey and Minnie, and they have some metallic components. Those are beauty. So everybody, what do you think? We're off to a pretty good start here today. I would say so. That's quite a few sets. And you know what? We're going to add to it with the tuning workshop. First off, big shout out to Lego Nits Kennedy. Thank you so much. This was sent to me so long ago by you in fan mail. And I said that I was going to create a modular building using this, and that is still the plan. And I'm glad that I was able to build this today because now I feel like I'm going to be doing that soon. I've got it on my to-do list, and it is pretty high priority. Okay, vehicles. We've got a tow truck, which looks super cool, right? Oh, yeah, I can actually tow a vehicle. It's got those pins right there, and this thing can tow a vehicle. I actually have one of these in my city already because I have another one of these built. It's just in my back room. So what I've got to do is combine them both. 
yeah, that's going to be super cool. And I'm going to, I'm, like I said, I'm going to do that right away. Then we got this really cool motorcycle, which looks like it can go lightning fast. It's got flames coming out the back of it. This is actually such a cool piece in like the dark orange color to create that motorcycle. Looks like a vintage chopper. And plus it's uh, rims are really nice. Then you've got this hot rod right here and this little piece that can raise it up, right? Yeah, this hot rod is really nicely detailed. Got some big wheels on it, some flames coming out the side, quite the engine and quite the radiator on the front of it. That will definitely be driving around the Lego city. But there's even more vehicles. I think this was my favorite one of them. This thing just like rides so low to the ground and just looks like super flashy. It's a nice looking vehicle right there. For sure. I like that. Right? And it rolls. So that's better. Or that's, that's cool. Uh, we also have this little mini vehicle right here, which is on like a, a sales stand. Look, hot offer, 50% off. This guy right here who has this little used car lot. Look at him. He looks like a friendly car salesman. He wants to make a deal. 50% off cars. Uh, this little trailer is pretty neat. It can be towed, right? So if you really wanted to, you could tow it around with a different vehicle. And then the uh, back of it does open up as well. Not much inside. There's like a little refrigerator there and a chair as well. See, look, this little car right here, it doesn't play around. It can tow that trailer. Perfect. Maybe this guy owns it and he's a traveling car salesman. There you go. Also, we get the dog house and this bulldog. Yeah, that's such a cool piece. I don't think I have any bulldogs in my city. Well, now I do. And then all of these minifigures as well. We've got the tow truck driver. I think this guy rolled up on the motorcycle. This guy looks like he's driving the hot rod. We've got a lady there that's looking to buy a vehicle. This lady here works in the tuning shop and there's our car salesman and this is probably a different customer. And the tuning shop is of course the main highlight of this set. Treads tuning. It's got a wheel built into the sign. That's pretty cool. This is a large uh, six by six sticker element. And this can uh, actually just slide right open. That's our garage door. Uses some of the uh, one by six by five panels there. And then we can lower that engine that's suspended within. Love the uh, dark red color. We've got uh, a nice light there on the side. Also love the uh, combination of windows on the side here as well. And the way they're framed with the one by plates with the rails, right? The uh, crane in the inside can actually slide, I believe. Is it stuck? What's it stuck on? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it should slide like that there. It is an open concept, so uh, these two sides are enclosed, but this side over here is open. And same with the back. And when we swoop around here, you can see some wicked cool welding masks that are printed. Those are sweet. And then there's just some additional details over here, like the pizza box and also the drill press beside a garbage can on top of those cabinets. And there is a nice sticker element inside as well, which represents a car calendar. So what I'm gonna do is take the design concepts from this and make a 32 by 32 garage. I mean, 32 by 32 studs and make a modular building for the Lego city. And I'm gonna be doing that ASAP. Just have to make room in the city, I guess. Uh, but yeah, lots of cool vehicles that we'll see driving around and we'll see some mini things driving in those vehicles. And then we're gonna supersize the garage. Oh yeah, there's also a computer right there, which is a really nice printed piece. I always run out of computer printed pieces. I feel like I need to order some more of those for my mocks. And then there's another nice sticker element right there behind that lamppost and beside the door. And it just has four different logos on it. There we go. We're getting ready to bring on the next set. We got to keep it in theme. Lego City mobile crane. This thing is pretty cool. 340 pieces. Check it out. It can drive around the Lego City, right? Got the uh, front secured there. We can also detach that and get ready to do some heavy lifting. First things first, find the operators of this beauty. Secure the load. Also secure the mobile crane and then check it out. When we crank this, it's going to lift it up. It uses one of those like hydraulic pieces, which is extending right now. 
can see it right there. And then we can twist this other gear, which is actually going to raise and lower the load. Also, the boom can be extended. This Technic lift arm right here pretty much runs through this entire piece right here, which is a very cool piece. I've never seen that piece before. I'm sure it's been used in other sets, maybe like Technic sets, but I've personally never seen it. And then we can still operate the crane when that boom is extended way out there. This is actually such a cool LEGO City set. This might be one of the best LEGO City vehicles that I've ever built. Honestly, then this can uh, rotate as well. But yeah, this is just like super cool. I like the functionality of everything here. I can't believe I've had this in my backlog for so long. It's crazy. Super neat. I wish I had a construction site. I guess I do have the uh, construction site technically, uh, like the rebrickable model in my LEGO city. Maybe I should park this out front of that. But yeah, there's also a lot of uh, details as well. Like I got the um, front windshields there and the two roofs. Also the sticker elements found all over this thing. It just looks like a heavy duty mobile crane. There's also an operator spot right here. So you can have one of your minifigures positioned in there. And there can also be two in the cab. Just like that there, they're locked and loaded and ready to go. And we're ready to move on to the next set, which has got to be Expecto. Patronum! <laughs> Look at this stag piece that you got. How cool is that? It's like a reindeer in like that gel pen blue. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it. Gel pen blue. Oh my gosh. That is so neat. Wow. Also, we got Sirius Black down here. And then we've got Harry, who's unleashing his Patronus charm. And Look at this. It's a stud shooter with a giant dish. So it's like, Expecto Patronum! <laughs> We've got like some, like one-dimensional trees. They're like flat-backed. Sort of an interesting building style with the olive, like tree branches or leaves. And then you can position, or at least attempt to position your two dimensions that you get in this set on the trees. For example, they can adapt to the studs like that. Nothing too crazy. I think uh, great value though. I can't remember what I paid for this because I bought this so long ago. But when you think about it, you get four minifigures plus this Patronus Charm stag. So pretty cool. So that is a grand total of nine sets. I'm not sure what the piece count is. I'd have to do some math, but that's what a day of building looks like. So this is what we've got remaining. I've got the Friends fireplace. I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I would end up probably parting it out and I don't think I have the heart to part that out. Then there's the Ministry of Magic. That I have an idea. I'm going to be building a modular building using the pieces from that set. In fact, holy crap. There is some great rebrickable models. That's funny, those have been stacked like that for quite some time. Uh, there is some great rebrickable models. Uh, that I might use to do that with. Uh, this, I don't know where I'd put that train. I guess I could just cycle my trains out, but I just didn't get a chance to build that yet today. Uh, the bat cycle I didn't build because it's Technic. I'm gonna leave it at that. I probably should though. <laughs> and I have no idea why I didn't build this today. I think it's because this stuff is going to fuel the city. Jose wanted to build the Disney stuff. That Hulkbuster needed to be built. You can't not build the pirate. This tuning garage is going to fuel a different project in the Lego city. And then uh, this needs an underwater area. And this here I'm gonna specifically use mainly for the Winter Village. So that almost needs its own video because it's going to involve building a custom skating rink for the Winter Village. Uh, I don't think I have any more in me today in regards to building, but why don't we place all these in the Lego room? Well, the Disney shelves are getting fuller and fuller, but the Disney duos have been scattered among the shelves. You got the Pocahontas ones right there. And then down here beside the very random Jurassic Park set, we have 
Nemo and Squirt from Finding Nemo and also the Mini Steamboat Willie. There's that other GWP that came out this year. And then we've got some more dinosaurs over here. Below that, the Ecto-1. And then finally we have Wally and the Disney duos from Moana. And then way up top here, we've got the Disney duos from Beauty and the Beast. Ah, thank goodness I've got an entire IKEA wardrobe packs unit for Marvel now because Captain America's shield and Thor's hammer and all of this other good stuff looks fantastic when it's grouped together, right? So this is pretty random, but for now, I've just put this epic little Hulkbuster right here beside the Quinjets. I had a dream, and it was placing Redbeard beside the duck because they both came from the Lego house. Unfortunately, Redbeard is too tall, especially when you factor in his box, but I think he looks all right right up there beside the Jurassic Park gate and Walt Disney camera. Also, Optimus Prime and a globe? Pretty random, but hey, that shelf looks pretty cool. Remember earlier in this video when I called this a rebrickable bottle? No, the construction site is a brick length designer program set. And that's what I meant when I said this belongs by that. And just around the corner from that, you can see a couple other vehicles that were featured in this little build session. Got the moving van just out front of the hillside house. And then the tow truck right there. And making our way over here. Around the corner. There's that fancy hot rod. Looks like this guy. Had a little bit of a spill. But there's the fancy hot rod right there. So of course, I'm not gonna have the time today to build a modular building, so this has gone into one of my specialized containers. And I promise you that this lid can close. Oh yeah, there we go. And I also promise you that I will be building a new modular for that in the near future. And I think I'm gonna leave this placement for another day as well. I do have a pretty good spot for it in the campsite, I guess because there actually is already a little bit of Harry Potter over here in the Lego city. If you make your way through the campsite by all the campers there and underneath the Lego Ideas treehouse, we've got Grop, Harry, Hermione, some centaurs and also Umbridge. So there we go, everybody. We've got a whole bunch of sets built and placed here in the Lego room, just sort of dominated the backlog a little bit. And we'll wrap up this video with a little POV shot of the campground and the zoo. I love this Lego city. It's always fun looking at things. And you know what? I wanna try and do some more uh, POV stuff in the near future as well. Thank you so much. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Farewell.